All right, guys, so the first thing we're going to do is go ahead and start off in canva.com. We're going to go ahead over here to create a design. Now, whatever paper size you're using are the dimensions that you're going to enter. OK, so I'm going to go over here to custom size. I'm using 13 by 19 size paper. So my dimensions are 13 by 19. But whatever paper size you're using is what you're going to plug in. OK, so this is how I'm going to do my design. So I'm going to go ahead and hit R on my keyboard um, for rectangle so I can get this rectangle. And the dimensions we're going to start off with. Now, keep in mind, every cap is different. So make sure you measure your cap, okay? But I'm just going to go by the cap that I'm using, which is 9 inches. So we're going to go ahead and make this 9 inches. It's 9 by 9, right? So that's the um, dimensions I'm going to make my cap. And then I'm just going to turn it this way. So it kind of looks like a diamond. So we're just going to go ahead and turn it this way, right? Because, you know, when, when you actually wear the cap, this is how it looks. So it's just easier to design. I know I want to go ahead and change that to black. So the first thing I'm going to do is go over here to elements. And I'm going to go to frames. And I'm going to find some letters. So I'm going to type in letters. And I'm going to go ahead and spell out hotter. First off, let me click this and lock it so that it doesn't move, right? Because I'm putting layers on top of this. So I really just want to deal with this right here without having, you know, to reposition that or whatever. So we're going to go ahead and lock that back layer so we can just work with this. So let me see, go ahead and spell out hotter, where's the O? One thing I don't like about Canva and these letters is that they don't put it uh -oh, in alphabetical order. You know, it would just be a little bit easier um, if it was alphabetical order. So I do have Canva Pro, but the letter elements are free. So even if you don't have the Canva Pro account, you can go ahead and use this. You see if I hover over it, it'll tell me if it's free and it'll do the same thing if it's like a pro feature, okay? But if you do um, wanna go ahead and try out Canva Pro, I have an affiliate link in the description box where it'll be free for 30 days, okay? I'm telling you, Pro is the way to go. So we're gonna go ahead and, so I have all my, um, well, I have hotter spelled out. So I'm just going to go ahead and take all these letters and highlight them and just size them down like all together. And this just makes it easier, right? So we're just going to go ahead and space those out. And another thing, like whenever you're spelling out words, uh, just, just spell it out how it's supposed to be spelled out. Because when you put the letters on there, you see how I'm separating my letters. Wait. Sorry, hold on. Can't talk and spell at the same time. So you see how, like, when I was pulling my letters apart, I could eat. They were basically in order, but just backwards. So just spell your word out regularly, right? So now that I have all of my letters, let me go ahead to position and hit tidy up. And now I think just kind of, let me zoom in a little bit. Just can kind of go in and resize them so that they're all um, about even. And I'm just going to use these purple lines right here that are popping up as a guideline, okay? So this line right here at the bottom lets me know, uh, you know, they're basically all aligned at the bottom. So I just kind of want, make sure they're all aligned. And then I can go in and adjust the height. So the most tedious part about this project is the, the, the designing. After we do the whole designing, everything else is a breeze. So I just wanna move that over just a little bit. And move my H over just a little bit. Okay, so all my letters are aligned, right? And I can just go ahead and grab them all again and make it a little bit smaller so that they fit right in here. 
All right, I'm going to highlight all of them again. I'm going to group them. So whatever I do to one, I do to all, and I don't have to worry about, you know, doing it to it um, individually. So we're going to go ahead and do that. And then I'm just going to repeat the same process until I spell out everything that I want to go ahead and spell out. So it's going to say hotter by one. So I'm just going to go ahead and grab those letters. And I'll come back. Okay, so I have all my letters together and I grouped everything together. So now we're going to stay in the elements tab and I'm just going to type in flames. And this is what I get. I want, well, first thing I'm going to, I'm going to go ahead over to the photos and I'm just going to just grab like several different uh, images of the fire, right? Okay. So now let me just kind of size everything down. And now I'm just going to go ahead and start dropping these into the frames, right? Um, let me go ahead and duplicate it. Let me zoom in a little bit. Okay, so I'm just gonna go ahead and drop this into the H. And what I can double, what I can do is double click this, like double click the H, and I can move that photo around. So I can actually use this same photo, right? So I can move it around. So let me just move it all the way to the edge like that and hit done. And then I can go ahead and duplicate that again. I'll use the same photo, but I can kind of like position it different and I can get a different effect if that makes sense. I hope, you know, like that makes, that makes sense. So I'm just going to go ahead and do that. And I'm just going to do the same thing for all the letters. So now that I have, you know, all my images dropped into my pictures and I like doing it like that because it kind of gives like a gradient effect, right? Like, you know, it's like dark right here and bright, et cetera, et cetera. So I like doing it like that. So we're still going to stay in elements and we're still going to stay under the flames elements. And I'm just going to go ahead and grab this one right here, turn it like this. And this is going to be my border. So I'm just going to take the same image and just kind of duplicate it all the way around the edge. Repeated the design all along the edge. And also what I did is I took the flames and I flipped it. I went up, I highlighted it and I hit flip for horizontal. Just so, you know, it wouldn't look so uniform um, going all the way around. So now that we have that, I'm just going to go ahead and hit the T on the keyboard to bring up the text box. And I'm going to type in degree. And I know I want that right there, like right about there. I'm going to go up here and change the font. I'm going to use this World Series font. Um, this is not a Canva font. This is actually a font that I imported to Canva, okay? Um, so I have that. Now I'm just going to go ahead and change the color. One thing that I do also love about Canva is that whenever you import like a PNG, a picture, into Canva, it'll pull those colors from that image, right? So... All the colors are pulled from like the flames and stuff that we use that we dropped into the um, frames are over here. So now I'm just going to go ahead and pick a color that I like to go with this. I think I like this light orange. I'm going to go up here, hit effects, and I'm going to make it neon. I do like that. Let me see what it looks like with the darker orange. I like the darker orange better. And that's our design, you guys. Like, you know, we just mix and match a bunch of different elements on Canva to create this. So now what I'm going to do is unlock 
our black box and I'm going to go ahead and group everything. And we're just going to, oh, hold on. Okay, yeah. So I have everything grouped and I'm just going to go ahead and turn the circle like this. Now the dimensions that we had earlier, we're just going to make this a little bit bigger because when you put it on your cap and you like um start folding the edges, you want to have just a little bit of a bleed, right? So I'm going to make it about 13 and a half. I'm going to stretch it all out until it's about 13 and a half, right? And now we'll just go ahead and download this and save it as a PNG and then we'll print. So we're going to use our Cricut to cut out um, like the topper that we're going to adhere all of our fabric to. So we're going to go ahead and hit new project. And this is like super simple. We're going to go over here to shapes, grab a square, and we're going to make our square nine inches, right? So just go up here to the top toolbar and hit nine. And it's just going to, um, since we have it locked, it's going to automatically, you know, make the size the same. And then we're going to go back into our shapes and grab a circle. And let's just change the color to circle for this video. So we have our circle and we're going to make our circle about 0.7. Let's try 0.7 to see if that works. Now again, this is just the size of the hat I'm using. So make sure you measure your hat um, so you can get your dimensions, right? I measured my hat and I measured my circle. So now that we have that, I'm going to go select everything on the screen, the square and the circle, and I'm going to hit a line and I want to center that horizontally. So now our circle is in the middle. So while I still have everything selected, I'm going to go ahead and hit slice. Okay. And now I'm just going to erase all the extra stuff I don't need, like these little circles right here. I don't need it. So this is our graduation topper and this is the hole where, you know, you know, like the hole in the middle of the thing. Well, Y'all see what I'm talking about. <laughs> and we're just going to go ahead and hit make it. And I'm using craft board, right? So my custom, um, my settings are going to be on custom and I'm going to cut it out again while we wait for my screen to load. Everything will be listed in the description box below. Okay. As far as supplies and things that you need for this project, I have the links and everything in the description box. Okay, so my I turned my dial on my Cricut machine to custom. We're going to go ahead and browse all materials. Actually, you know what? I cut it on light chipboard, right? Yeah, that's what I did. Light chipboard, hit done, and I did more, right? So like more pressure. So we're just going to go ahead and cut all this out. Now you need to do this twice. One for the black cardstock that we're going to do on the back. And then one for the board that we're actually going to attach everything to. All right, so let's go ahead and cut everything, print everything, and then we're going to go assemble. If you're enjoying this video so far, go ahead and give your girl a thumbs up. And if you want to support the laboratory and help it grow, all donations are welcome. You can donate using the PayPal link in my description box. And I'm just going to go ahead and test out my topper. Make sure it fits and it fits perfect. Yes, perfect fit. All right, so this is the fabric we'll be using for this project, right? It's costume satin. I got it from Walmart in the sewing aisle and it's 100% poly polyester and it was like $5 for two yards. So I just cut it into like, you know, a smaller size and I'm just going to go ahead and take it over to my Rakoma 15 by 15 heat press and pre-press it at 385 degrees for about 30 seconds. Once I have my fabric nice and flat, you know, I just pre-pressed it to get all the wrinkles and stuff out. We're just going to go ahead and press our design. I'm pressing my design at 385 degrees for 60 seconds, okay? Once our design is done being pressed, we're just going to go ahead and remove it. And I cut it down to a smaller piece. And I just left about an inch of the fabric around. No real reason besides the fact I can't cut a straight line to save my life. <laughs> and I didn't want to cut too close to the design. But then after I go ahead and hot glue everything all around, I will go ahead and trim off that extra fabric. 
before I put the black car stock on top to kind of hide that, you know, because this looks like super ugly and I want it to be nice and cute, right? And as you can see, while I'm folding everything over, you see some of the design. That's why we ended up stretching it out a little bit after we did the design because you want that bleed, right? You want like a little seamless, continuous design. And that's pretty much it, you guys. Like I said, after the designing portion, the project is pretty much a breeze. Don't forget, I also have a tutorial on how to create a custom stole. So make sure you check that out as well. Um, check the description box for a list of all the supplies used. And if you want to, you know, tell your girl, thank you for this video. Uh, buy me a cup of coffee. Support the laboratory. Help me grow. My PayPal link is in the description box as well. Um, all donations are welcome and appreciated. And as always, guys, thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe.